Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Well, it's a long story. So let me just start all the way at the beginning. Oh, no, 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 not that far back. Ah, yes, perfect. There I was, in my room, doing simple exercises. Bored out of my mind. Man, I'm so bored right now. So, I saw only one logical solution. Do what I've been doing on this channel for the last two years. Turn it into a game. All right, so what part of the body have I not exploited for content yet? That's right, I use my heart to my heart's content. All right, now I just need to get my heart rate into my computer. Oh, can't, can't be that hard, right? I mean, oh, it's just Bluetooth. Yeah, Le, soon <sighs> came to realize that Bluetooth Low Energy, or PLE, is not the same thing as regular old Bluetooth, and will regret all his life choices that led him to this exact moment. What even is PLE? Well, let me explain. No, 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 not yet. The montage will come later. All right, all right, all right. Well, let's say regular Bluetooth is this big bucket, while BLE is this tiny syringe. They both hold water, but one clearly contains a lot more. If I want some water from the bucket, I can get a lot of water all at once, but it also drains a lot quicker. While with the syringe, I can get these small little packets, allowing me to get water for a much longer time. See, big data, high power. Small data, low power. In short, BLE is perfect for heart rate monitors. Just a simple number, a few times a second. But that also means I need to figure out a way to connect it to my computer. Because unlike regular Bluetooth, I can't just connect it and send data back and forth with a serial connection, like I used to do with all my previous projects. Enter the magical BLE API for Unity. With a little bit of coding magic, I can make my PC look into my heart. Or at least like how fast it's going. All right, let's think of some fun things I could do with my heart rate. I could try hitting a certain number, or try to keep a plane afloat, or raise it as high as I can. You know, this isn't working. If I can only use my heart rate, all I'm going to be doing is flailing around as fast as I can. And getting any significant change takes way too long. I want more control. I wonder if there's anything that I've done in the past that can help me. All my previous efforts were all pretty lacking when it comes to control or accuracy. They're either super janky or way too basic. Wait, how do they do it in the AAA games these days? A full body motion capture suit? Nah, nah, nah. I'm not going to spend $30,000 on something you can do for free with your camera. I present you computer vision. Accelerometers? No. LiDAR sensors? Nah, bro. Just get your camera and a convolutional network. Welcome to the wonderful world of machine learning. By giving a computer millions of images with known human poses, it can learn to detect these patterns and then even guess the pose of a never before seen image. If that sounds complicated, well, that's because it is. Luckily, I don't have to do it all myself. There are plenty of smarter people who have already created a number of great networks. I can import existing models into my code, and these days it even works in the browser. Using TensorFlow.js and the MoveNet model, I can track my full body with 17 key points at over 60 frames per second. That's one hell of a controller. Oh, look at me flapping. Oh yeah, taking all those cool poses like this. Wah, wah, kung fu, yeah, move, wah, chug, Just like my heart rate, it's not in Unity yet. I need a way to send it to the game. All right, um, I'm just going to set up a WebSocket server to my PC to send data from and to all my different programs. Yes, that's 17 floating balls in Unity, all right. Mission success. Of course, I'm not completely made of balls. I have some limbs too. I need to add some sort of skeleton to get a better understanding of my body in the game. I can place a cylinder at each joint and just stretch it out to the next one. Oh, looks good enough. Okay, so my heart rate is connected and I can get my full body in the game. But I hear you asking, how is the game even going to work? Well, let me explain. For some reason, you've lost the ability to move forwards and backwards. You can only go left and right. And to make things worse, there are a bunch of obstacles coming your way. Watch out! You will have to bend your body in all kinds of weird ways so you don't get hit 
and fall into the endless void of nothingness. Alright, I need to figure out a way to spawn endless obstacles. Spawning is easy, that's just one command. But I want a whole bunch of different formations of blocks. But they can't be fully random. I still need to be able to fit through. Hmm, think, 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 think. Oh, yes, I remember. I once saw a dungeon generator based on a low res black and white image. That could do. If a pixel is white, I place a block. And if it's black, just leave it be. Then, with some scaling and moving, I can create obstacles of all kinds of shapes. All I need to do is make some simple low res images. Ah, we've done some great work already. I'm ready to take a little break. The Japanese are just geniuses. Why stop at dodging blocks? If you can make the design so intricate, there is only one possible pose you can take. Luckily, my system can handle any image. So I'll just add some crazy poses to my images and ta-da! Why is my game? This won't cut it. Spawning 1 million cubes per image seems a bit overkill. There must be a more efficient way to do this. Is there a way in Unity to easily display images in the scene and have a physical shape attached to it so it can check for collisions? Well, of course there is. Those are just sprites. Almost every game uses them. You just need to add a click here and then here and then slide this thing and then drag it in, add an inverted mask and there you go, a 2D shape in 3D space. Now I just need to do a double 2D and 3D collision check against my balls and see if they fit in the shape or not. And that's all there is to it. Yes, Yale, move. Move like you've never moved before. Remember how I was going to implement my heart rate into this game? No, me neither. A fundamental game design principle I like to use is to have a certain contradiction a player has to manage. If you look at me right now, I'm really giving it my all, swinging every part of my body as hard as I can. What if I try to limit that behavior, to make myself more mindful of my movements. I could use my heart rate to increase the speed of the game, making it harder the more I move. This will force me to move as slow as possible while still getting all the poses, at least in theory. I could also start moving too fast and end up in a negative feedback loop where I just keep getting faster and I keep getting more tired. Alright, the game needs one more thing to get me fully riled up. A crazy environment. What better way to feel alive than a giant crowd cheering you on? Or even better, put stage lights everywhere and some epic music. And of course, let's put everything in a giant pool of lava. Get ready to perform the most epic exercise of your life. Oh look, this is where we started today. I'm just going to let the clip speak for itself. Ah, I've never been so fit in my life. That's what I call a big success. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed my acrobatics. And subscribe if you want to see more in the future. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.